What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video here on Crushables Extended. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys so much for thousands of subscribers over here on this podcast, NBA Talk. I don't even know what this channel is, reaction channel, whatever it is. You guys' support over here has been absolutely amazing. But today, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And we're going to be reacting to a little feature report titled Every NBA Team's Best New weapon so this should be very interesting let's get into it before we get into today's video make sure you guys drop a like on this one subscribe if you're new to the channel you guys have already been doing an amazing job at that so keep it up greatly appreciate it but this article is written by zach buckley august 31st so i'm a little late on this one but uh, this is definitely an interesting article for sure and i really want to take a peek at it so nba ba team's best new weapon let's get into it i love it when every single team is involved in an article it just means more uh, you know, talking about every single team and everyone gets a little love here. So first weapon is DeJounte Murray. Well, yeah, definitely is going to be DeJounte Murray. I mean, they just traded four first round picks to get this man. And yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about DeJounte Murray and Trey Young in the backcourt together. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to see how they fit together. So yes, definitely DeJounte Murray makes a lot of sense for this first choice of the Atlanta Hawks having DeJounte Murray because that's... Four first round picks you gave up to get DeJounte. So hopefully Trey Young and DeJounte look really good. Uh, let me know which backcourt you'd rather have, DeJounte or Trey Young or Donovan Mitchell and Garland. Let me know. I'm uh, actually curious to see what some of the guys' answers are. Boston Celtics, Malcolm Brogdon, for sure. Man, when they got Brog, I always said that Malcolm Brogdon made a lot of sense for them. And uh, that when they traded for him, uh, I was honestly enthused for them. They didn't even have to give up that much. Uh, they gave up nobody in their rotation. Give up Aaron Naismith, who was never going to develop in Boston anyway, in a, in a future pick that is probably going to be a you know in the twenties because they're going to be a good team. Unfortunately, they lost Danilo Gallinari. It looks like for most of the season. I'm assuming. I guess there's a chance. I think he might be able to come back at the end, which is when they kind of need him anyway. You know, maybe just another guy who can uh, score a little bit. Not sure how much he will be playing in the playoffs because I know defensively he's not the greatest in the world, but. I do like uh, the addition of Malcolm Brogdon a lot, and I think he's going to help out a lot, whether it's a six-man role, starting, whatever they need. Brogdon, that's great depth for them, and they didn't have to give up that much. So, Brooklyn Nets, TJ Warren. TJ Warren's so interested in me because last time I saw TJ Warren, the man was an absolute stud. I mean, literally everyone looks so amazing in the NBA bubble, though. It was kind of crazy. We had 50-point games everywhere, and TJ Warren obviously is one of those guys that was a beneficiary of those. And he looked phenomenal. We haven't seen him play since then, though, I feel like, if I remember correctly. And it'll be very, very interesting to see what he looks like again on a basketball court. Especially this time in a winning situation. Indiana was always one of those teams that was kind of a winning situation. But at the same time, they weren't like contenders or anything. But with TJ Warren and the Nets, I mean, the Nets, if everything goes well and everyone's getting along... They look like a contender on paper as long as the you know the off-court drama isn't affecting them too much. But I'm curious to see what TJ Warren looks like. I'll definitely be uh, interested in that. Mark Williams or Charlotte Hornets? Yeah, man. The Charlotte Hornets didn't have the greatest offseason in the world. Uh, they ended up not taking Jalen Duran, which they could have. They went with Mark Williams instead. Honestly, I really hope they just start Mark Williams right away. I don't know much about Mark Williams. I'm not going to sit here and act like he's ready or he's raw. I don't know. But Mason Plumley, I don't... I, I don't think you have any future with Mason Plumlee. Uh, so just start Mark Williams right away. What's the worst that could happen? Mason Plumlee isn't a guy that you need to start over him, in my opinion. So uh, that's their only other center on the roster, I believe. So if I'm Charlotte, why not just start Mark Williams right away? Like, I don't know if that's what they'll do or not. But, man, I can also understand maybe not wanting to rush him. But I would just give him all the freaking reps you can, honestly. Because uh, I don't know how good or bad Mark Williams is. But can be any worse than Mason Plumlee, I imagine. So... Actually, Mason, let me, Mason Plumlee saw it. I'm not going to sit here and act like he's not bad. It's just he really isn't a starting center anymore, right? So just start Mark Williams right away. Uh, Chicago Bulls, Andre Drummond. Uh, Drummond has done a decent job of being a backup center lately. Obviously, he's gone from being the starter and your best player from in Detroit to being a role player in a lot of situations, whether it was Philadelphia, uh, Brooklyn, and then now, of course, with the Bulls, which he signed a two-year deal with. Uh, so Chicago had a very interesting offseason. I do like the addition of Andre Drummond. Whether you uh, is Andre Drummond necessarily better than uh, Vucevic defensively? I feel like he might be a touch better. Not sure how much, but I feel like he definitely could help Chicago in a way if Vucevic isn't doing the greatest job, maybe protecting the rim. Not saying Drummond is elite at that, but I think he could be a bit better than Vucevic potentially. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So uh, particularly Lonzo Ball can't shake his neck in knee injury. Yeah, they got Goran Dragic as well. Uh, Andre Drummond is an early favorite to be the cleanest fit. So, very interesting. We'll see what happens there. 
Cleveland Cavaliers, Oshai Abaji. Well, this one's late. Obviously, this is now Donovan Mitchell. Uh, yeah, Abaji apparently projects to be pretty good in the NBA. Uh, I think he's like 22 years old already. He is uh, an older uh, prospect coming out of the draft. But I believe he's very good at three-point shooting, and he has a good uh, or he has upside to be a good perimeter defender. So exactly what you need in today's NBA. You cannot have enough of those, uh, as you know. So uh, I do like the addition of Utah getting Oshai Abaji. Utah is a very interesting roster right now where they honestly... I uh, feel like they kind of went for a little bit of fun with Colin Sex coming over. He, he might win them some games on his own. Who knows if Sexton could go drop 30. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. At least in 2K, that's how good they make Sexton. But in real life, he may not be that good. He's coming off an injury, so we'll see. But Abaji, hopefully he finds a role with the Jazz. It could be really good. And then uh, we'll see where Utah ends up You know, in the future. Dallas Mavericks, Christian Wood. Yes, I feel like Christian Wood... I do like this for Dallas a lot, especially the Deuce plan on starting McGee next to him. I think that takes a lot of pressure off of him. So I do like this a lot. I think there will be some times where he is playing center, obviously. Uh, but they didn't give up too much to get him either. Just similar to the Celtics, they gave, gave up their 26 pick and then like four or five guys that weren't even in the rotation. So really love uh, this trade for the Mavericks. And I like the addition of Christian Wood. Obviously losing Jalen Brunson does suck. But I think getting Christian Wood definitely makes up for it a little bit. Maybe not all the way, but maybe a little bit. KV, uh, Denver Nuggets, Catavius Caldwell Pope. I think we've all said this, that the Nuggets had a fantastic offseason. Just kind of a low-key, really nice offseason. Getting KCP, who was going to fit perfectly next to Nikola Jokic. And then they all got Ish, also got Ish Smith. I don't know how much of a role he'll be playing in the rotation. And they also signed Bruce Brown, another 3-and-D three and, three and guy. And honestly, man, just not... It's... It's just such a good offseason for the Denver Nuggets. We've all kind of said this. It's only two additions, but it's two additions that kind of just fit what they needed perfectly. As long as Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. can stay healthy, we've been saying this for years, but the Nuggets look like a contender. As long as those guys can stay healthy, though, is the big issue. KCP is going to provide some defense on the perimeter, shoot some threes. He's going to be really nice, probably moving a lot off the ball, uh, you know, getting open off of Jokic, you know, passes. Like, it's going to be a very, very fun Nuggets roster to watch as long as they're healthy. Detroit Pistons, Jaden Ivey. Yep, so we're very, very excited to see a Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham backcourt. The future in Detroit is bright, man. As long as Jaden Ivey pops right away, which he looked good at, uh, in the sample size in Summer League that we got, uh, if he could play really nicely next to Cade Cunningham and Detroit's just out there and hitting on all cylinders, who knows, man? They may be a play-in team this year. I mean, they're they're looking like a very fun team on paper. Zeke Bay could step up a little bit. Uh, you got Cade Cunningham in year number two. Jaden Ivey, like I said, if he's great his rookie year, who knows? The sky is the limit. Go. I don't know about winning championships here, but you know, playing is possible. I would say. Go and say Warriors. Dante Divincenzo. Yeah, the Warriors definitely lost a couple guys like Gary Payton and Otto Porter Jr. People are very, very quick to point out those two, uh, those two losses. But the Warriors find a way, man. They just do. They find a way to get guys and make them great. And Dante Divincenzo has already been a solid role player his entire career, really. And as soon as he gets to Golden State, he just came from Sacramento, which uh, that situation didn't end all that great. He was very unhappy with how they treated him towards the end, trying to cut down his uh, uh, value, it sounded like, when they were trying to keep, you know, when they were tanking. So, DiVincenzo ends up with the Warriors. I think he's going to look great over there, and I think that's an excellent signing for the Warriors. He's going to be great off the bench. Houston Rockets, Jabari Smith Jr. A lot of people were disappointed with how he looked in Summer League, but uh, sometimes you can look great in Summer League, and then you suck in the real NBA, and then sometimes you can look awful, and then you're just fantastic in the actual NBA. So, uh, as long as Jabari Smith Jr. and Jalen Green can be a really nice pairing, I think the Rockets are in good business. They got Shingun as well. The Rockets definitely have a very, very fun core going for them. Just similar to the Pistons. I don't know, man. If Jabari hits on all cylinders, Jalen Green's good. Kevin Porter Jr. can be good. I don't know. Never know, man. Now, the West might be too loaded, though. I don't know. I was going to say Rockets play in tournament. I don't know. That might be a little too crazy, but I wouldn't necessarily bet against it benedict matherin on the indiana pacers uh, i love benedict matherin man i wanted benedict, i wanted benedict matherin for the blazers if we but we got shade and sharp which i'm also excited about him as well uh but matherin seems to be a guy that's ready to roll out right away next to tyrese halliburton i'm very fun or very excited to see what the indiana pacers do this year now that they're finally committed to maybe a full-on rebuild they still need to trade Buddy Hill and Miles Turner, as we know, but I'm assuming those two will be gone by the trade deadline, especially Miles Turner, who's on a one-year deal. I imagine they don't keep him past the trade deadline. He's been in rumors for years. And then imagine that they're, they're going to extend him probably. This is probably how it's going to go. We're going to think Miles Turner is going to finally be gone. Pacers are going to be like, nope, we're going to extend him. And then he's waiting. And then maybe trade him in the offseason. Who knows? But 
Yes, I love Benedict Mather. I'm excited about him. Clippers, John Wall. I'm excited to see a healthy John Wall in a good situation. Uh, he looked pretty decent in Houston, but obviously Houston shut him down because they didn't want to you know, be good anymore. They tried to kind of make it work with James Harden, John Wall, Christian Wood, and DeMarcus Cousins. It was a an Old Depot. It was a very interesting team on the Houston. Or no, that was, uh, well, Old Depot came over from the Harden train. But you get what I'm saying. When they try to make it work like a, a Wall Harden backcourt, but obviously Harden very much wanted out a John Wall Old Depot backcourt. It just wasn't a team that was going to get it done. Uh, they tried, but John Wall is finally in a winning situation with the Clippers. I'm excited. Patrick Beverly. Yeah, I mean, the Lakers needed somebody like this. Patrick Beverly isn't like the greatest addition in the world, but he's just going to be a guy that's going to bring so much energy. We know what Beverly does. He just gets everybody motivated. He's one of those guys you want to be a teammate with and you don't want to have to face. He's just so annoying. He's a pest. You know what I mean? One of those guys, those Lance Stevenson kind of guys where he's probably a little bit more outlandish than Lance Stevenson, I would say, who obviously talks a little bit more. It is very interesting to see Russell Westbrook and Beverly as teammates, though. That is still very funny. But I do like the addition of Patrick Beverly. I think the Lakers needed to, somebody like this that could just kind of bring some energy a little bit, for sure. Jake LaRavia from the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know much about Jake LaRavia as, at all, but I'm pretty sure he's like a... Isn't he like a really tall 3 and D guy or something like that? I'm not really sure. Posting a pristine 55, 38, 77 slash line. He won't create a scoring chance or drop jaw with athleticism, but a shooting defense first till the end stinks will help him find a role. So yeah, I think the Grizzlies traded up for Jake LaRavia and I'm pretty sure he's a really good prospect. So yeah, I, I like the addition of, I don't know much about him. Nikola Jovic, kind of the same thing. I don't really know much about Nikola Jovic. I'm not a huge college basketball watcher. I usually just kind of find out about him in the draft, uh, but he's a raw, freshly butchered steak, but he could eventually intrigue as a 6'11 spacer and table setter. So, I mean... He's already got the name going for him. We already got a good Nikola Jokic. So, I mean, can't be much worse than that, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but Nikola Jovic, we'll see. Uh, but we'll, 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 I'm excited. Marjan Bochamp for the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, somebody I don't know much about. So when it comes to these college guys, uh, but I think he came from the G League Ignite. But uh, I remember he was very emotional when he did get drafted. So it sounds like he's got the chip on his shoulder to be really good. And the Bucks might've found themselves a good one with that 24th overall pick. They didn't make many additions, but Marjan and Joe Ingles. Of course, Timberwolves is Rudy Gobert. We all know the big trade they made to get uh, Rudy Gobert. So Utah walked away with two massive trades to trade their two best players. And I'm excited for Utah. I'm excited for Minnesota. I'm excited for Cleveland. I think all three of those franchises walked away really nicely. Uh, but obviously one of them in the end is going to regret the trade. It just kind of depends on who it is, but I love the addition of Minnesota. Absolutely going for it, making something happen next to Edwards and Towns. Minnesota on paper should be a fantastic team in the regular season. At the very least, we will see come playoff team, how well this translate. And I cannot be more excited. I'm going to have to buy a VPN to watch Minnesota games because they get blacked out where I live. So I'm going to have to do that. I think one of my subscribers suggested that to me. So shout out to you if I remember correctly. Norris Pelicans, Dyson Daniels, uh, another guy that the Blazers potentially could have drafted. He got hurt in the summer league, so I didn't really know much about him either. I know he's a very, uh, very good playmaker and decent on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, and then his three-point shot, I think, needs to be developed a little bit more. But the Pelicans already have a really good team. I think Dyson Daniels is going to fit exactly what they could need over there. Maybe some help because Devontae Graham didn't really work out. If they want to have some lineups where they have Dyson Daniels playing point guard, I'm sure they could. But of course, CJ is probably the main point guard there for now. But although they do have Brandon Ingram, Zion, and CJ who are all going to handle the ball on their own. So maybe Dyson Daniels' role is going to be very questionable at first. New York Knicks, of course, Jalen Brunson. Probably the biggest free agency signing as far as uh, someone leaving a team, which is kind of tells you how disappointing free agency was this summer because Jalen Brunson, as good as he is, probably not the biggest name in the world. Uh, definitely a big name, but not the biggest name, obviously. But yeah, the Knicks get Jalen Brunson. Obviously, they missed out on Donovan Mitchell, which does suck for them. But at the same time, getting Jalen Brunson is going to be very interesting for the Knicks. And it gives them the best point guard they've had in quite some time. Hopefully, he is as good as advertised. And he doesn't just like fall off after getting the big contract. Because sometimes we see that where guys like Terry Rozier get these uh, you know huge playoff games. And they fall off a little bit. Well, Rozier, I wouldn't say it's fallen off like crazy. But... Hopefully, Brunson could be as good as he was in the playoffs, I will say. Chet Holmgren really sucks. We're not going to be able to see him play at all this summer. Or not this summer, the season. Uh, really unfortunate that he gets hurt in a, in a pro-am game. Like, just the worst situation ever. So, I'm curious to see what the Thunder do, do this summer. Or, 
Why do I keep saying this summer? This season. Uh, but yeah, that sucks for Chet, man. Really hoping to see him healthy. Paulo Boncaro. Yep, man. He If he's as good as advertised, Orlando is another team that intrigues me as maybe making a jump this year. Maybe playing tournament. Like, they already have a really good roster. If Jalen Suggs can pop, Franz Wagner's already good. Their center position got Wendell Carter or Mo Bamba. Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs. I mean, Orlando's in a really good situation. If Paulo can be just great his rookie year, would not be surprised at all if Orlando is surprising some people. P.J. Tucker, Philadelphia 76er. Yep, I mean, 76ers get a tough forward. We all know what P.J. Tucker has done lately. He's just been going to every contending team, it feels like. He's been on so many contending teams, like went from the Suns to the Raptors to, I don't even know what else, what, Milwaukee. You got Miami, now Philly. I'm, I feel like I'm missing a team in there, but he's just been traveling all over the world, just playing with all these contenders because they need a guy. And Houston, Houston Rockets as well. Like I said, P.J. Tucker has been everywhere. And uh, hopefully he can be as good as he was or as good as he is. Obviously a really good three-point uh, corner shooter and then brings toughness on the defensive end. Josh Okogie for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's uh, a very good perimeter defender. But other than that, Josh Okogie is okay. So uh, maybe he plays a big role in the rotation. I think they made these minimum signings because they thought they were going to get Kevin Durant. Never ended up happening, of course. Portland Trailblazers, Jeremy Grant. I love the addition of Jeremy Grant. I think he's the best forward the Blazers have had in quite some time, which is very, very sad to say because the last good forward we've had is probably LaMarcus Aldridge. And then after that, you got like, what? I mean, Batum and Aldridge left at the same time. So I would say Alfred Camino, and that's really sad to say. Alfred Camino was decent and all, but he was no good offensive threat at all. He was decent on the defensive end, but I love the addition of Jeremy Grant along with Gary Payton, so... I love the Blazers offseason. It was good. Uh, maybe not as sexy as some people would have liked. A lot of us, a lot of fans probably wanted us to go get Kevin Durant, but sometimes you just can't do stuff like that. But I do love the additions we did we did make, and I'm curious to see how many stack up in the West. Keegan Murray for the Sacramento Kings. Yes, Keegan Murray is going to be very fun to watch for Sacramento. I also like the addition of Kevin Herter. The Kings should be a lot of fun. They really should be. And then Sabonis, Fox, Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray. Excited to see where the Kings stack up in the West. Their goals are to be in the playoffs uh, for once in their lives. So we'll see if they're able to do that with the team they have. Jeremy Sohan for the San Antonio Spurs. Of course, the Spurs are going to be a very, very bad team this year. They're probably the worst team in the league now. I thought Utah was going to undercut them, but they got sexed in the market end. So Utah maybe is a little bit of a better roster. So the Spurs should be in the front line to have the number one odds, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. Maybe the Thunder could undercut them as well, but the Spurs should be pretty bad. We got Otto Porter from the Toronto Raptors. Otto Porter was someone I really wanted for my Blazers, but the Toronto get Toronto Raptors get another 6'8 forward who could play defense a little bit and shoot some threes. So I love Otto Porter. Uh, the addition of Toronto getting him. There's just another tall wing they have over there in Toronto, which I love that. Utah, ja uh, Utah Jazz is Walker Kessler. I think he'd update this probably to Colin Sexton. Uh, but yeah, Walker Kessler was a interesting addition. They also have a Baji now as well. So the Jazz walked away with two rookies and then like 13 or 15 draft picks, if I remember correctly. So a lot of good capital uh, from all their trades. They also traded Royce Neal for a first round pick as well on top of that. So Walker Kessler, love that addition for the Jazz. Or just, I, I mean, you would probably put Colin Sex, But I also like the idea of Walker Kessler and we'll see how good he could be. Number 30, Monte Morris from the Washington Wizards. The Wizards... One of those teams, I'm curious and excited to see how good they are this year because, of course, Bradley Beal wants to make the playoffs, but can their team even make it is the question. But Monte Morris should be a solid starting point guard next to Bradley Beal. But that is going to be the whole entire article. That is every NBA team's new best weapon. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Drop a like if you did. This is Crushables Extended. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.